uh, the Russian immigration, uh, the Russian church abroad people, they were very focused on Russia. But did they put uh, their money where their mouth was? In sense, uh, how many Israelites did come back after uh, the 40 years of captivity in Babylon? Mm -hmm. So in the same question uh, might be uh, applicable here. So you're, you're here, so it's kind of very natural that you came to your forefathers' land, right? Yeah, so back to my roots. Back, back to your roots, right, and you are quite happy with this. But uh, can you uh, talk about uh, input of uh, Russian church abroad uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union? Quite difficult. Obviously, 78, I'm from the first, uh, a d descendant from the first immigration. Right. So this is 1920, so how many years is that? But basically, 70 years by 1990. Uh, after 70 years, people were quite established in the West. The French, the Russians in France became rather French. The Russians in America became rather American. They had their ways, they had, they settled, and obviously in the 90s, thinking of immigrating, not any, not everyone could even think of that because very difficult. Uh, in, after, in the, uh, the, the, in the 10 years following that, obviously things became easier, but very few people are immigrating on the whole. The, the young, there's, there, there are many young fellows and, and girls that come here looking for their roots. Some find it, others don't. Uh, some figure that they don't belong here and uh, maybe Either they don't belong, maybe they miss the comfort, maybe the, they miss the, the well-organized society or something else, whatever. The culture, the music, I don't know. Uh, but it, it, it's extremely difficult. To me it was easy. To me it was totally natural. Maybe I'm... Transition. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just I've been... To, I mean, many cultures and many uh, situations in my life and uh, somewhat romantic and idealistic and uh, to me it was natural to confront the problems that uh, would surface over here with regard to immigration, with the, uh, once again with the arrogance, with the incredible bu bureaucracy, but the upside to me is very real especially the church, the martyrs, the monasteries, the individuals, the people. To me, that is a richness that is very real and that I don't find in the West. And you, you cannot expect from people who were like you, uh, brought up already in the diaspora, they they, are not, they they weren't born in Russia, so basically for them it would be to move to a new country. To another culture even. Yeah. My brother has become totally Canadian. Did, did he ever visit he, Russia? He, he never visited. He's not interested and, um, in visiting. He's not interested in anything, but that's another story. Right. But uh, he would feel totally uh, like a stranger. Right. Totally estranged. Outside totally of his comfort zone. Yeah, uh, exactly. All right, but I mean, do you think that what what would be, in your opinion, positive uh, contribution by the Russian Church abroad uh, toward uh, toward uh, Russia? What can Russian uh, Church abroad positively what do for Russia? Not much. Not much. <laughs> Not much. B before the wall came down. It did a lot. Stay informed, perhaps, or to, to have Inform, better uh, safeguarding things. the traditions, safeguarding right. the church life, uh -huh. um, and even 
purely psychologically that there was a church that was independent and real and uh, rather holy, especially throughout the first three uh, Pierva Hierarchy, the well, first hierarchs, hierarchs, hierarchs. hierarchs. Yeah. Losing my English. No, no, no. That's not uh, really English. <laughs> uh, then, as Russia started uh, reviving, uh, the Russian Church abroad started uh, coming, uh, losing somewhat of its spirituality in a way. I remember it as Alexander Lebedev that we mentioned a little bit earlier, saying that we overeat. The Russian church abroad has become fat. Um, while Russia started do, doing the opposite. Interesting. Interesting. The op exactly the opposite was happening here. Mm -hmm. But now it, it came a very long way, but some people are saying that in the old, in the, in the old days or previously it was consider, considered that the major passion, iskushenya, of a monk was adultery, blood. Always was somewhat uh, considered as the, the, the hardest passion to fight. And now they're saying that a new trend, if I can use the word for a new passion, is um, Syria Bralubia, I don't know, uh, a love for money. Right, right, right. And it's even that somebody was saying that even in Mount Atos now, money, 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 everything is money. Right, right, right. And uh, is this what's happening in the Russian church? Perhaps, or definitely partially, but to which extent, I really don't know because I'm not that close to everything right. happening. Right. You, you, you also, you also were uh, witnessing uh, to uh, the events connected with uh, our reconciliation, and what, what, is, uh, what why did uh, some uh, people uh, reject reconciliation? What, what was, why did it happen that some people they found it's uh, impossible for them to uh, accept uh, the Moscow Patriarchy? Well, it's a frame of mind okay. and mis, uh, misinformation a lot and, and, and a certain heritage from Soviet days obviously where bishops and clergy were partially KGB. Uh, there was a lot of that either by choice or, or not. But uh, Close, uh, closely associated with the system. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Everything was closely associated with the system because the system was had penetrated right. all social and cultural levels right. of life uh, in the Soviet Union. Okay, so so it's it's uh, what uh, I I don't have really uh, much uh, information about, but my feeling was. That Fright. That, that they were afraid. That it's uh, because people who, the, who who were brought up in the Soviet Union, they're different type of people. They speak the same language, or even some people would argue it's not the same language because they don't speak really sort of language. Uh, people uh, uh, go used to. Right, right. So, so therefore, it's psychological. It's just sort of a fear of people, of different people, of people of different mindset, basically, and it's. Uh, 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 just uh, willing to uh, wall off from them. Yes, and also uh, the Russian church abroad being very fragile in a way, because it's uh, it's a uh, it was spread out throughout the world. Um, it wasn't rooted. Mm -hmm. Uh, through centuries in one specific place with a specific culture and so on had to survive in a strange land and it was a, a cl very close society which in a way could start stagnating uh, somewhat and when the prospect of opening up towards new frames of mind new cultures 
new ways of looking at things, not canonically or dogmatically, but just different people. People were afraid of losing that which throughout decades it was safeguarding, which was so-called or purity of the church. Or their identity was they identified. Identity themselves. and purity of the church, right, yes. Right, right, right. Uh, okay. Uh, and also, wh why do you think uh, so many from your generation, like you mentioned your brother, uh, stop, uh, stop attending church services? What oh my God, that's a difficult question. Yeah. There are probably several layers, right? Well, there are Does many it? probably <laughs> reasons, uh, uh -huh. whether cultural or spiritual or... But do you think that language, play, uh, language plays any role, like in, in the case of your brother, perhaps, if uh, he would have access to services in French, would it be helpful? Uh, no, I don't think so. So it's the whole, whole ethos of the church became redundant for him. It's something that does not really uh, the, relate to uh, modern, uh, modern person mindset, right, basically, anymore. Mindset or metaphysical aspirations, right. where everything is at hand. Right. Мужик не перекрестится, пока гром не... Не гром. How do you say that in English, I guess? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one to crack. And there, must, there must be something that... You are translating. You, should, you, you, should, only, you only turn to God when you have problems. Yeah. Uh, lack of problems? The 60s, 70s, 80s? Not really. I mean, everybody uh, has his share of hardships, right? Yeah, obviously. But it's relative yeah i don't know it, it's very i don't i can't answer that well, it's 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 partially cultural it's partially spiritual uh, how do you deal with living in a society with a different set okay. of morals let, let, let's rephrase it what what would church uh uh do uh in order to help uh, them uh, people like that to, to remain in church what what do you think is there is anything the church can do better in order to uh, keep those people. I can't answer that. Good. Okay. I can't answer that because the church should not change. People should change. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fair enough. Uh, and I, I find that uh, actually uh, parishes uh, of the church abroad have a much stronger social life as compared to Russia. Here you go into a church and you leave and you get to know a few people, but that's it. You don't right. you don't go have a cup of tea with Pirashki afterwards. You don't have parties like the Russians abroad do for Christmas and Easter and What about annual parish meetings here? Like annual parish meetings? Uh, is there such a thing? I must <laughs> I don't it. know. I don't see them. <laughs> I don't see what about that. the parish council? No. It's. Uh, I think the the there was there's a new stuff. Right. Whereby the priest is pretty much the sole leader within the church. But still, within the parish. But still, there is. Uh, they do have councils and so on. But the the word from the nastayachel from right. the uh, the head priest is is law. Right. It seems since. since uh, there is no strong traditions. No, uh, As well. Apparently, people don't know what to do with uh, those uh, As well. organs. Yeah. So not not even the tradition outside of church with regard to right. such councils like, like that. In, in the states, pretty much everybody is familiar with board of directors and management teams and so on. Right, and right, right, right. There's, there's a whole business aspect of society, of organizing societies so much more developed. Uh, I remember Jordan, the one that uh, from New York that became, right. he was at the head of NTV and he created the Renaissance capital and he, he's, he's, there was they, there was an interview with him and they asked him what could make uh, Russia more efficient and he said a little more Anglo-Saxon blood. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It was 
Yeah, it was, was good. A lot of food for my sword. So...